Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. When you have the Holy Spirit filling your life, you can expect to have a greater and a different level of communication with God than what you might have without that. We need to know the Holy Spirit as a person. Not a person like we are, but a person. And I say that he's a person because he has all the traits of personality. Everything that makes a person a person, he has it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He's not an influence. He does influence us, but he's much more than an influence. He's, he's not just a power or a presence, although he does all those things. He is a person. He has knowledge. He has a mind. He thinks. He knows things. He has feeling. And he has will. And I want to just share a couple scriptures with you just to verify my point. 1 Corinthians 2.11 For what person perceives, knows, and understands what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him. So I can look at you and you can be sitting there smiling at me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're paying one bit of attention to what I'm saying. You could be thinking about something totally different. Well, I don't know it, but your spirit knows it. You, you know, the inner part of you knows. Well, it's the same way with the spirit of God. He is the only one who fully knows the mind of God. So when we pray to know the mind of God on something, it's very important to realize that the Holy Spirit is living in us and he's the one that will reveal the mind of God to us. So when it comes to, quote, hearing from God or being led by the Holy Spirit, we talk a lot about the still small voice or many times when God speaks to you, it's going to sound like your own thoughts, but there's a different oomph on it. There's a different emphasis on it. And so there's a lot of ways that we can hear from God, and I'm not going to get into teaching on that. That's another teaching for another time. But I want you to know that when you have the Holy Spirit filling your life, you can expect to have a greater and a different level of communication with God than what you might have without that. It has nothing to do with your salvation. We're saved by the blood of Christ. But when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we stay filled with the Holy Spirit, And I don't think it's just a one-time zing that we get. I believe that one day in the world sucks out everything you've got and you need to get a fresh filling every morning in order to get out and function the way that we should. And so, being all filled up with the Holy Spirit is not about being a Christian, it's about living like a Christian. Like one of the gifts of the Spirit that we'll read about later in 1 Corinthians 12, and, and that scripture starts out, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning the gifts of the Spirit. And yet there are many people that are ignorant concerning the gifts of the Spirit. They lack knowledge. And there was a time in my life when I didn't have the slightest idea what those gifts were or were they available or should I want them or should I just assume if God wanted me to have one, he'd give it to me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. And I'm sure that there are people even here tonight that You don't know. Maybe everything that I'm saying to you is going to be totally like an eye-opener, and maybe for some of you it's just going to be a refresher. I taught this in chapel at my ministry this week, and so many people said to me, boy, did I need that. Man, it brought a fresh awareness of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I mean, some people that were seasoned believers sent me text messages. That's exactly what I needed to hear. So we need to realize that the Holy Spirit wants to do supernatural things for us, in us, and through us. And one of the gifts of the Spirit is a word of knowledge. Now, that basically just means that you can know something that you don't know. That the Holy Spirit can cause you to know something that you don't know. And chances are many of you have words of knowledge at different times, but you don't even know what it is. You think it's just a coincidence or an oops or whatever. I believe that God 
functions that way a lot as I preach because I'll have people say or write to me, how did you possibly know that about me? How, how did you know that's what I was going through? Well, I don't know, but the Holy Spirit knows. And the Holy Spirit's in you, and the Holy Spirit's in me, so he's got this great communication thing going on where if we pay attention to him, we can know things that we don't know. But I had an interesting thing happen in a meeting just a couple of meetings ago. And, um, you know, I always want to be bold and step out in the gifts of the Spirit if I feel like God's wanting to use me. And so before I came to the platform, back in the back, I kept just kind of seeing in my heart this little boy about eight or nine years old with brown hair. And I felt like the Lord was putting on my heart that he had autism, and his mother was a, was a single mom who had been convinced that it was all her fault, and she just felt overwhelmed and didn't have any idea what she was going to do. So, you know, of course, you go through what everybody else goes through. Well, well what, 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 if, what if I'm just making that up, or what if I'm just thinking it? And see, the, the thing about uh, those kind of things is sometimes you have to step out in faith. Now, honestly, when you've got five, 6,000 people in a room, and you step out in faith, you're not taking too big of a chance because you might have somebody in the whole building that, <laughs> that has that need. So it's not like I'm the bravest person on the planet, but it was quite amazing by the time it got finished. So I, I told my story, and then Pastor Mike came to me the next morning, and he showed me this picture of this little boy that was like eight years old, and he had all this brown hair, and he said, here's your boy. He said his mother was absolutely blown away. It was life-changing for her. And that's why God likes to do things like that sometimes. It's not so somebody can stand on the platform and look like they're super spiritual, but the gifts of the Spirit are for the good and the profit of everybody. And this woman desperately needed a word from God. She felt overwhelmed and over her head, and she felt guilty, and she had driven two hours, is that right, to come to, come to that meeting. Wasn't even, she just needed to hear from God. And right away, first session, God says that to her. Things like that can change your life. Now, these kind of things don't necessarily happen all the time, but, it, you know, it's being filled with the Holy Spirit, like, like Pastor Mike always says, it's, it, it's not about being a Christian, it's about being a dynamic Christian. How many of you want to be a dynamic Christian? You want to you have uh, the wisdom and the power of God. So he, there's different gifts, and we're going to look at them later, but I thought that was a good example to share with you about how God can cause you to know something that you don't know. He knows the mind of God. 1 Corinthians 12, 11 talks about the will of the Holy Spirit. All these gifts, achievements, abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each person individually, exactly as he chooses. Now, I want to look at 1 Corinthians 12, and I'm just going to read you this list of the gifts of the Spirit. I don't intend to get into a deep teaching on these things tonight because I have a different purpose, but I want you to be aware of them, and I want to say to you that there is a lot of good material available on being filled with the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and if you're hungry and you want to learn, then you can get some of it. And we have a book called Filled with the Spirit. I've got another book called Knowing God Intimately that just came out in paperback. And it's about all the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And let me say that you don't want to seek the gifts of the Spirit just to be a show-off and not seek the fruit of the Spirit because love is the most important thing of all. Amen? And here again, I'm aware that some of you are just like, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Well, that's exactly why I'm talking about it. <laughs> that's the whole reason I'm talking about it, because so many people, and I cannot even imagine how many people watching my television, you're like, what is she talking about? Well, see, the thing is, is I went to church for many, many, many years, and I, I had no idea that we could have a victorious, overcoming life by, instead of being overcome by everything, we could be the overcomers if we knew how to receive the strength and the infilling, the power of the Holy Spirit on a regular basis to help us be people who can instead of people who can't. And let me just throw this out to you. Because one of the things that one of the men 
at my chapel wrote and said to me, he said, the thing that you said that impacted me the most was you have not because you ask not. And see, we can't presume and assume you need to ask. So I, every day I pray that I will be strengthened with all might and power in the inner man and that I will be filled and refreshed and refueled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you are aware of Pastor Tommy Barnett, but he's, he's mine and Dave's pastor and a great man of God, been in ministry for 50 years, I guess, or more, and uh, really, really respect him. And he, uh, he was at our board meeting and did some leadership training for us a couple of weeks ago, and he said that three times a day, he stops what he's doing, and he asks the Holy Spirit to guide him, to direct him, to lead him into the will of God and to enable him to do everything that he needs to do. I think we need to have a little better communication with this wonderful person who's come to live on the inside of us, who brings us the presence of the Father and the presence of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, who has such an awesome, amazing ministry to us. And I think that you can see this ministry in your life just grow dynamically and you can be so much closer to God than what you ever have been if you'll simply learn to just ask. And so hopefully by the time we finish tonight, you're going to realize, well, the Holy Spirit's the comforter. When I need comfort, I don't have to run to my friends. I can ask the Holy Spirit to comfort me. The Holy Spirit is my strengthener. Man, when I need strength, I can ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen me and on, so on and so forth. So... What do you think? Does it sound good so far? Yeah. And just think, we got three more sessions after this one. Yeah. So 1 Corinthians 12, 1 says, Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments of supernatural energy, brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. That's another word. They translated it misinformed in the King James. It's ignorant. Now, <laughs> so verse um, let's start in verse 6 now there are distinctive varieties of operations of working to accomplish things but it's the same God who inspires and energizes them all in all but to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit the evidence the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for the good and the profit. To one is given in and through the Holy Spirit the power to speak a measure of wisdom, and to another the power to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Spirit. To another, wonder-working faith by the same Holy Spirit. To another, the extraordinary powers of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophetic insight the gift of interpreting the divine will and purposes, to another the ability to discern and distinguish between the utterances of true spirits and false ones, and boy, do we need that. Man, do we need that. I mean, on a regular basis, I pray for the discernment of the Holy Spirit to function and flow in my life so I don't think somebody is, wants to do me good when really they're out to use me or do me bad, or to think that, something that somebody's saying is right when really it's not right at all, let me say loudly, we need to stop believing everything that we hear on the news and everything we read on the web. <laughs> Amen? And to another, various kinds of unknown tongues, and to another, the ability to interpret such tongues, and I'm sure you'd all like me to stop right here and give a big Bible lesson on speaking in tongues, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that uh, it is a wonderful gift, and it's amazing to me that anybody who operates in these gifts or believes in these gifts, they're called Pentecostals or Charismatics. I wish that we could get beyond labels. <laughs> Why can't we just be the children of God who believe the Word of God? I mean, some people, you know, 
say this one's a prosperity preacher and that one's, you know, this and that and something else. And it, it makes it sound like that's all that person ever teaches and that they're way out of balance on it. And that's just, it's just silly. I mean, we all should believe the Bible. And so really, no matter what denomination you're from or what the doctrine of that denomination is, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, we must believe what the Word of God says above what men say. Now, we are making a serious mistake if we don't do that. So really, if you're more interested in some of these gifts, then you need to study and grow and, and learn. And, you know, not every book you read is right on, but most books, there's enough good stuff in it that you can, can learn something from it. I'm reading a book right now on the person and work of the Holy Spirit. It's the third time I've read this book in my life, and there's, I love everything in it, but there's one part in here, about one paragraph, and I just didn't agree with it at all, so I just wrote outside, I don't believe this. <laughs> so see, you don't have to swallow something just because somebody else says it. If, you're, if you don't bear witness with it and you don't feel like it, you know, you can be open to having your mind changed. But the point is, is don't, don't throw out somebody's teaching just because you find a thing or two that you don't necessarily agree with. Amen. Now, real quickly, don't have time to park here, but you need to be, you need to be, we all need to be content with the gifts that God gives us. And when I talk about gifts, it's not just those nine gifts that are listed there in Corinthians, but there are different manifestations of the power of God that work through us. I have a very strong gift of communication. I heard my husband say to somebody the other day, that is one woman that can talk about anything. <laughs> and the scary thing is, is I could probably sound like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> and I mean, when I was a kid in school, when I was in high school, I mean, if, if I didn't know anything or hardly anything about the subject, I could write a paper on it that was brilliant. <laughs> but then there's a lot of other things that I can't do. I mean, I'm not great with all this modern technology and, you know, I mean, selfies were out three years before I knew what they were. And <laughs> I've still only taken one in my whole life. And I'm like, you know, I don't, maybe I'm wrong. I've spent all these years teaching people to die to self and now everybody takes pictures of their self all day long. <laughs> I'm, so for my birthday tonight, Jackie brought me a, a selfie pick. It's like <laughs> stick, a selfie stick. <laughs> so you put your camera in it, and you hold it out here, and you can take pictures of yourself all day. So. But I mean, my, my five-year-old grandson can work my phone better than I can. So please... Find what you're good at and do a lot of it. Amen? Find what you're good at and do a lot of it. And the thing is you're not good at, either don't do any of it or do the least amount you can. Because you're going to enjoy your life a lot more if you don't spend it trying to be a 10 at something you're never going to be more than a 3 at. Spend your time developing your strengths. I'm good at talking, so I just do it a lot. <laughs> Works out good. Now, the Holy Spirit also has a mind, the mind of the Spirit, and that mind of the Spirit is in us. Let, let's look at Romans 8, 5. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue the things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, I love that. That's what the mind of the flesh is. It's just getting up here in your brain and trying to reason everything out and make sense out of it without considering at all the spiritual side of things and what the Holy Spirit wants to say or do. See, I can look at something and my mind says there's no way I can do that. But then my spirit says, but all things are possible with God. So we have to stop living off the top of our heads. 
I hate it when I ask somebody something. They say, well, off the top of my head. It's like, please do not give me something off the top of your head. I can get something off the top of my head. So isn't that good? The mind of the flesh is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. And how much of the world stays in that area right there? Just sense and reason, sense and reason. And how many people can you try to talk to about spiritual things and they're just say, well, I'm sorry, but that just doesn't make any sense. That just doesn't make any sense. Well, it's because you're thinking with the wrong mind. And they may be thinking with the only mind they have. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you can't think with the mind of the Holy Spirit. All right, I'm starting to get excited. <laughs> so the mind of the flesh is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit and it's death, death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul peace, both now and forever. Oh, that is so good. So good. And one of the ways when, when you can know that even if something kind of sounds like your own thoughts, one of the ways that you can tell if it's God speaking to you or if it's just you speaking to you is the impact that it has on you and the, uh, uh, the revelation content of it. In other words, I could say something to you 20 times and it might not mean anything to you, but if the Holy Spirit spoke it to you once... So I am a teacher, but he is the teacher. And so I can stand up here and be a teacher, but I trust that the teacher is working in you to take what I'm saying and really make it a revelation to you. Because you don't just need more head knowledge, we need revelation knowledge. We're already educated way beyond our level of obedience, and so something is wrong. We know all kinds of stuff. Our Bibles look like coloring books. They're red and yellow and pink and <laughs> underlined and got stars, and, you know, sometimes we feel like Christians, as far as our example in the world, by and large, although there's a lot of great ones, are still pretty messy, and so we obviously need something <laughs> that we need to seek for. So here's an example of how just a word from God can really be life-altering. How many of you have ever had that happen? God's just spoken something to you, and it's just been life-changing to you. Okay. Well, um, I was struggling with something that was just really bothering me, and it was something that I've struggled with on and off for a long time, a go away and come back. You ever have any of those kind of problems where they go away, and then all of a sudden you think it's over and it shows back up again? So annoying, because the minute it shows back up, you know what you're in there, because in far because you've been there and done that before. And so I was praying, God, you got to show me something. And God just spoke one sentence to me, keep it simple. Now that's not, see, that didn't impress you. <laughs> Nor would I expect it to. But boy, when, when that word came to me, and it just sounded like my own thoughts, but it had a totally different impact. And so when I heard that, it was like it went in about 50 different directions, and I could just see like, yeah, I complicate this by the way I think about it, and I can complicate that by the way I approach it, and yeah, just keep it simple. And so that's just been like, so refreshing for me. Now, sadly, we forget things, so I may need another refreshing in this area six months from now. But that's the great thing about having the Holy Spirit working in us is one of the things that He does is He brings all things to our remembrance when we need them. Amen? Well, I just want to encourage you to remember that the Holy Spirit is a person, not just an experience or a force of some kind. He is our helper. And God wants to have close fellowship with us. And all we really need to do is to ask Him, Lord, I want to be close to you. Grant me the awesome fellowship of the Holy Spirit.
dan 10 miljoen gevangenen zitten wereldwijd vast. It's a hostile territory here. Prison. And I'm speaking proof of that. Zij die achter zulke muren leven zijn mensen en Jezus vraagt ons om naar hen om te kijken. I'm here for a third degree burglary. I have a lengthy sentence of 400 months. The judge looked at me and said, I'm going to sentence you to spend the rest of your natural life plus 20 years behind these prison walls. A lot of people don't have family here, so they feel forgotten. There's not a lot of people beating the door down to get in here to see us. Here you go. That outreach of the hand to touch their lives in a personal way, to, to come visit them, to, to see that somebody is really thinking about them, that somebody cares for them on the outside. You're giving to people that really are like at the bottom of the totem pole. And with your giving, that, uh, that's actually bringing somebody up. It's the fact that you thought about us, even if it was just to come by and have prayer. We just feel loved, you know, that we're not pieces of garbage, you know, um, thrown away, um, that somebody does value us still, and that there is hope, there's hope for us. Tot nu toe hebben we meer dan 3600 gevangenissen bezocht. Zijn er meer dan 3 miljoen cadeautasjes uitgedeeld. En meer dan 139.000 gevangenen hebben voor hun leven met Jezus gekozen. Well, here at the ministry we strive to help people both here in the U.S. and around the world. We do that by providing help such as the gospel, medical care, clean water, feeding programs. It's like being part of one big family. And today I'm inviting you to join the family. If you're not a partner with Joyce Meyer Ministries, we would so appreciate your commitment to become one. We don't ask for or require any certain amount of money. All that we ask you to do is pray and then do what you believe that God has asked you to do and to do it consistently. It's the consistency that is really important to us because we're consistently on television daily around the world and so we need consistent partners that are gonna stick with us. And not only will you be helping preach the gospel through television, but all these many, many thousands upon thousands of outreaches, people being fed and clean water being provided and medical care and putting books into prisons and all the things that Jesus tells us not to forget to do. And so I believe that you will pray and that if God puts it on your heart to join the family, I believe that you will. So thank you for your consideration. God bless you. Do you think that your thoughts are random and meaningless or do they affect you more than you realize? Well, God's word teaches us the importance of our thoughts. In Strijd in je Denken legt Joyce uit waarom letterlijk alles in ons leven samenhangt met ons denken. Actually, everything in life begins with a thought, even the changes that you might be looking for. Deze bestseller, met een oplage van ruim 6 miljoen exemplaren, heeft het leven van veel mensen al veranderd. Bestel Strijd in je Denken door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joy-meyer.nl slash strijd. Een vervuld leven komt niet uit de hemel vallen, maar het is zeker mogelijk, zegt Joyce Meyer. En ze laat je graag zien hoe je dat kunt bereiken. Maak kennis met Joyce, met haar levensverhaal, met haar tips voor het dagelijks leven, met haar boeken en alle andere impulsen die je kunnen leiden naar een vervuld leven. Bestel gratis de informatiebrochure en bel 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure.